Hi, Alan Messagy here, and uh, recently we've had occasion to go out and assist several people with mapping some current state workflows, and uh, this can not be real natural for a lot of people. So I wanted to go through real quick some, some techniques, um, a process you can use to do process mapping that should really help. So we're just going to go through several steps here, and when we're done with it, uh, if you have questions after you've reviewed the video, and you've tried to process map, you have questions, then please, by all means, give one of us in operational excellence a call. We'll come out and help you. So let's go ahead and get started here. What we're going to do first, before we get to all the, the uh, symbols and all the lines and all that, we're just going to create a list um, of the tasks that we have. So first and foremost, what we want to do is identify the process name. And what I like to do right off, the, right off the bat is identify the first step and as near as you can what the last step is. On just a blank, blank piece of paper. Um, I don't even like to use lines. So whatever your first step is, you know, write it out. What is that first step in your process? So you've named the process. You write the first step, as near as you can, write the last step, and if you need to rework this a little bit um, later, you can do that. So the next thing you're going to want to do is consider the, the level of detail, and generally speaking, um, what we're dealing with at this point in time is the what. Um, we're not getting terribly detailed into how you would go about performing steps. We're more concerned about the what. Um, so you might want to look at your current or at your, sorry, future state epic workflows and just to get an idea of the level of detail that those are written in and that'll kind of help guide you as far as how much detail to get into here in this, in this uh, current state mapping that we're going to go through. So the next thing that you want to do is basically act like I am there looking over your shoulder and you're going to explain to me what this process is and you're just going to start with the first step you're going to write it out, and then you're going to write down what the second step is. Like I said, we'll go through an example here in just a minute, so you can have that, and so on and so forth. And just list it out in a bullet format, just like you're talking to me. Just write it down, first to last. And then you're going to want to add a couple things. And, you, you know, this is personal preference. You can do it however you want. Either as you're going or when you're all done, you can come back and do this. Um, before I get to these other elements to add, though, I want to just remind you of a couple caveats as you're going down through each step. One, don't forget about decisions. Um, decision gates that you just, you know the process so well, you make them on the fly. Um, a lot of times those are not readily apparent, and you may very well forget that you're making a decision. Like I said, you know it so well, sometimes you forget to write it down. Um, but to explain it to somebody else, for it to make sense to somebody from the EPIC team or someone else um, working on this project, then, then you need to have those decision gates documented. The other thing is um, a follow-on process. When we get into the example, you'll see this, but when you get down uh, into a decision gate, one branch of it, say, yes, here's my decision, my diamond. We'll talk about shapes here in a minute. But the, the answer may be, yes, okay, continue on in this process. If your answer is no, you may have a follow-on that leads to a totally separate process of a different name on a different piece of paper. So we'll get to that. So as you're going down through and listing these steps, don't forget about decision gates, and follow-on processes. Um, so, now these other elements. The who, who's doing each of these steps, and this could be a, a role of a person within your department, and we could have multiple roles, or depending on how wide the scope is, it may lead to another department. And you may just have a department here and say, this department does the third step in our process. Okay? 
And then the other two elements that we would ask you to consider and to add on the right are the computer uh, system name. So if this step involves accessing a computer, entering information into a computer, looking up information in a computer, then just write the name of the system over here on the right. And then on the very far right, sorry I'm running out of space here, small whiteboard, but what you want to do is, and this is optional, depends on how much uh, experience you have with process mapping. You may not need to do this step, but for those who are fairly new to process mapping, it may help to go through and put the shape that this step is. If it's a regular process, or sorry, a regular task, just a regular step, it's just a, a rectangle. If it's a decision gate, then it's a diamond. And a couple things to remember here, if it's a decision gate, you're going to be asking a question in here. Okay, so you'll have a, a question. If it's a task, it starts with a verb. Somebody is doing something. So typically statements within a rectangle within a process or a, a task step um, will begin with a verb. You'll have a question in a diamond. And then the other two um, are a rectangle with rounded corners. And I'm not too picky. If you want to just go ahead and use a reg regular rectangle for your first step, fine. What I would ask you to do, though, is on the very first step, write the word start with a colon so that somebody from the outside can tell where the first step is. And on the last one, you would put the word end. Like I said, not very picky on those. If you want to use just a regular rectangle, that's fine. On the last step, then you just write in end so the person reading the map knows where you stopped. Um, so once you've got these four elements, the role, the step, the system, and the shape, you've labeled the who, um, then what you want to do is just double check it. Because once you get to the process mapping, it can take a little bit of time. And it's easier to change it here. You know, do this on a whiteboard, do it on a pencil and paper on a clipboard, just quick and easy. Leave, you know, leave some spaces in case you think of other things that need to be added. You can do that without a lot of rework. But double check this. Actually go walk the process, physically walk the process, or talk somebody through it to make sure that you haven't omitted something here. Um, and then, like I said, the last step, typically when you get towards the end, you may be using um, a follow-on process. So be sure to note those as you're going through your follow-on processes. So the next step is we will go through an example here, and hopefully that will help. Okay, so I've been doing some work recently with surgery, and we had some questions on the transcription process and how that worked and turnaround times and all that. So I went and did some mapping. So I'm just going to use that for an example. It's a pretty simple one with only uh, two rolls, so it'll be a very s simple swim lane diagram. Um, so I've just set myself up a little grid here, as you can see, transcription process. I've got who's going to do it, my step, the system name, and the shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go through and fill out the step. So let's start with call, uh, call, call dictation system. Next step, enter work code. And I think I'm going to pause the tape here in just a second to speed this along. Dictate, whoops, got an extra letter in there. Okay, dictate H and P. Okay, so as you can see, I've come back and finished filling these in. So we had the first three steps before. Call dictation system, enter work code, dictate H and P. I went through and added the rest of the steps. Download two to three jobs, transcribe the H and P, 
Here's a question. Do you have encounter number? If no, the H&P goes into a hold, a hold status, into a holding queue. Uh, then, then we got to find an encounter number, match that encounter number to the patient. That's a manual process. Once that matching is done, then, then it automatically releases to ProvCare. And then we have a follow-on process uh, for the short stay unit chart. Um, charting process or looking up the information to complete the chart. So as you can see this gets a little bit dicey when you're just listing steps. When you get to the decision gates, the yes or no, um, that can be a little bit confusing when you're in this format. So do your best with it and just remember we'll put the shape out there in a minute here and it'll make much more sense when we actually diagram it out. So I'm just going to go through real quick here and put the who We've got the physician doing everything down to here. And then we have the transcriptionist um, doing, doing all the rest of these down to here. So pretty straightforward. And then the follow-on process. So that's pretty easy. The names of any computer systems involved, I believe, I'm not positive, but I believe this is Transcend that the docs are actually calling to do their dictation in. Um, same on the next two steps. And I believe this is Transcend that they're downloading from. They transcribe, I believe they type that straight into Transcend. Um, they could go into probably a multitude of different systems trying to find the right encounter number to match it up to. Um, so I'm going to just put a question mark because I'm not sure. There's probably a bunch there. This one we have a step that says auto release to ProvCare. So obviously that's ProvCare. And this is a follow on process so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so the shape. Call dictation system. This is our first First step, so I'm just going to write the word start in there to remember that I'll put that on when we get to the diagram part. Enter work code. These are all going to be rectangles all the way down until we get to our question here. So this one's going to be a diamond. The rest of these are all going to be regular steps. And the rest of these in here are all going to be regular rectangles. Not very rectangular, but that's, that's supposed to be a rectangle. Um, and then the last step is, um, oh, it's going to be actually going to be our follow-on process. So we'll, oh, that's a lousy straight line, isn't it? Um, okay, so our follow-on process will be like a home plate. Like that. And we'll put the name of the follow-on process in there. So I'm just going to write... SSU since we don't have much space. So that's it for kind of laying it out, getting ready to do the actual process map. Once you do a couple of these, um, you can do a lot of shorthand and you won't have to be this thorough. You'll be able to get to the mapping part um, a lot faster, but this will help get you started doing it in this bullet type format. Okay, I hope you can see that all right. Um, this is a template that is available for your use if you would like to start with that. Um, some folks, it really helps. It, it helps with them. If nothing else, it helps uh, remind you of some of the key identifiers that you need to put on your map, like the, the title and so on and so forth. And it reminds you that, we, that our maps will be created in a swim lane format where we have role or responsibility down the left here and then our process steps going from typically starting in the upper left hand corner and going from left to right and and down as we work through the map. So um, these templates are available. I find them to be kind of restrictive because sometimes you have multiple decision gates within one role and these swim lanes just are not wide enough. So but that's available for you to use um, if you would like. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just, I'm going to map it out freehand 
and we'll see how this goes. So the first thing I'm going to do again is title the map Transcription process is the name of my map. And I'm going to have uh, the swim lanes here. So I'm going to try to save as much space as possible and just put a line there and I'll, I'll draw in the, the lines in a minute here. So call dictation system. I'm going to write start. And I'm going to do a lot of abbreviating here just so we can keep it um, on screen, or on the whiteboard actually, since it's such a small whiteboard. Okay, call dictation system. The next step is going to be enter uh, work code. That's a two digit work code. And then I'm just gonna connect the boxes to show the, the flow of the work. So it's going from left to right. So just connect it with a line and an arrow pointing the, the flow. Um, the next step is going to be dictate. In this case, it's an H and P. Okay, so on and so forth. Um, now, what I'm going to do is put physician here because they are doing this step. There's my swim lane. And so the rest of the steps are done by the transcriptionist. I'm just going to put trans and that's uh, really medical records. Probably more detail is better than not enough. Okay, so the first step they're going to do is download two to three jobs. And then we're just going to connect this box to that one. Lines don't have to be perfect. Just try to make it clear and not clear and legible enough so people can see it. Okay, then we're going to transcribe. H and P is going this way. And the next step was our question. So we're going to ask, uh, have encounter number question mark. That was our diamond, if you remember. So we're coming into our diamond. And this is where mapping um, comes in handy when we get to these decision gates. So if we... Let's, let's go with no first. So this will be our no branch down here. If we don't have the encounter number, if you remember we had a step about hold. It goes into a holding queue. And then the transcriptionist, oops, sorry I blew that. Got ahead of myself a little bit. I like to write the words first. It makes it a little bit uh, easier, more freehand for me. So then we have uh, find H and P, and I'll put a box around that and my little connector arrow. And then we have match match encounter number. Put a box around that and connect it. And then we have our, uh, if you remember, off of the yes branch, it was kind of hard to see, but we had our uh, auto, auto release to Provcare. And I'm just going to abbreviate there as well. So you can see we've got our yes, we've got our no. When we don't have an encounter number, it's going to require more steps. 
once we have this match here, they manually match it up, then it feeds back in. And you'll find that that's very, very typical in a lot of cases where you have a yes or no type question. Um, it will feed back into the same process ta or the same task in the end. Um, so then the last one on this one, and I've kind of run out of space, so I'm going to have to cheat here and come down to do my connector to my off sheet, or sorry, sometimes they call these uh, off page connectors, so I slip there, um, to my follow on process, which I'm going to call SSU uh, charting, or chart lookup, how's that? Okay, so that's it. Um, that's really it. You know, sometimes they get a little bit more complicated. A, a couple of tips here. When you do get to the decision gates, um, follow one branch all the way through. It can get confusing if, you if you're trying to do a little bit of this one and then, oh, no, this one. And, and like I said earlier, definitely look up uh, your future state epic workflows which, by the way, for this one, I don't think there is. Um, but look that up because it will give you an idea of the level of detail, and you don't want to get too bogged down in the details. Uh, don't feel bad if you get into this and get totally overwhelmed. That's very, very normal when you're, when you're new at mapping. Um, so don't feel bad. Sometimes you just need to step back and break it out. Maybe you've tried to map two, three, or even four processes and you've tried to put them all on one page when really you need to break those out and separate them into um, smaller individual processes. So hopefully that explanation and that example helps. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and give any of us black belts a call in operational excellence. We do use Outlook quite religiously, um, so go ahead and send us an, an invite and uh, just find an open time on our calendars. And if you can't find one, then give us a call and we'll help out.